Hey, I'm Jason Chapman, and I run a music store with my brothers, John and Jeremy. People are always asking, what is it like to be in a family business? Well, I've been in a band with my family for the last 28 years. And if that wasn't enough, we recently opened a music shop. Since opening the shop, we found that the people that come through the door are just about as unique as the instruments they carry. And now, since they gave us a TV show, we leave the cameras running, and there's always something going on at the shop. Welcome back to another episode of the Ozark Music Shop. We are back again this week with more of whatever it is that we do. Yes, we filmed it, and now you get to watch it. <laughs> That's right. This week on the show, we are going to dive a little bit more into the history of the Chapmans like we did on our first episode, explaining a little bit more in depth what warped our minds the way it did and uh, made this guy turn out the way he has. I'm, I've been trying to figure it what's out. Wrong? What's wrong with me? Nothing is wrong. It's, yeah, there is. There's a lot of things wrong with it. Probably something. <laughs> We've got old footage of us playing on a uh, another TV show in the early 90s. Um, it's our first show, is it? No, we've done this before. Yeah. Can't you tell? <laughs> Jeremy stole Garth Brooks' shirt. And then and gave it to everyone yeah, else. <laughs> we thought, well, that's an awesome shirt, so we'll all get one. <laughs> yeah. It was a Garth Brooks era, so keep that <laughs> in mind when good. you're watching that's it. Right. It also has some uh, footage of Mom playing, which uh, that's kind of rare stuff to see. So Mom's playing bass on there. Going, I stole her job. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do about it, Mom? <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> you are. We also have a, a special guest that is now an employee at the shop and a close friend of ours, Liz Carney, is on the show, and she's been on the show before. But she has, but now we're introducing her. Yeah, we had the cameras up to do a little bit of this sort of filming that we're doing right now, and we thought, well, let's, hey, Liz, let's grab your guitar. Some, let's pick some songs with Liz because she's, right. she's great. She's a good singer, yeah. Uh, we also have some more shop talk where John explains the dangers of not humidifying your instrument. I'm surprised that a lot of people didn't know that, but we are going to be, that's our public service announcement for this episode. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to another take episode. Take care of those. Yes, take care of your instruments, people. It should be, uh, it should be easy to do. You love it. Yeah. But uh, enjoy the show.
this all started with a passion. Uh, music has been a part of our lives for as long as I can remember. Our goal from the start was to have an outlet where we could feel that passion in others. At the acoustic shop, this is not just what we do, it's who we are. Being uh, three brothers growing up pretty much in the back of a van, which started out, started out with a just a cargo van with a few chairs in it, and then we moved up to a 15 passenger van, so we each got our own bench. But it was still very tight quarters. <laughs> ah, <holy cow. laughs> Give me a circus pin. <laughs> I like this. There's my hand. Hello. And there were definitely some some drag out fights along the way, but we learned really quickly how we could vent by hitting me in the eye. Maybe not the uh, average work environment that you would, you would see. I have no memory of why he gave it to me, the first one. And then 10 minutes later, we were all over it. And nobody held a grudge. And I had to borrow some makeup from another band because it was a shiner. We have learned how to, to work together, get air our grievances, and then get back on the same team again. After this incident, Dad came up with a genius idea of instituting the no face rule. We could hit anywhere but the face because face obviously begs too many questions from the fans. So when we decided to open the music store, uh, a lot of people were like, are you sure you want to open a music store with your family? And it's, for us, that's the only people we've worked with is just brothers and dad. So it, it just seemed like the next logical thing. Bob's and dad's boys and girls, the first time on the Blinky Show, and I can assure you, it won't be the last. They're called the Chaffin Family from Denver, Colorado. It's called Bluegrass. Simple man. 
folks, this is John here for Shop Talk, and today we're going to talk about humidity and your musical instrument. Um, humidity is a necessity for any musical instrument that's made of wood, and your violin, your mandolin, your guitar, your banjo, they all have wood in them. Uh, wood naturally has liquid in it, or moisture, and as we uh, dry it out, it's going to have less of it. So that's gonna make it shrink up and also cause some of those wood fibers to kind of split and separate a little bit more. So on your guitar, we'll use this as a kind of an example, what will end up happening is things like when it shrivels up, you'll get the neck to bow just a little bit, or your glue joints like the br bridge will come loose, um, or worse yet, will get cracks. And that's what we see most often with uh, instruments that are dried out. So we definitely wanna humidify them. Uh, ideally, we want to see those at a 45 to 50 percent humidity. Um, that gives us a really good safe bet. Um, anything below 35 percent, we're really risking uh, damage to those instruments. Anything too much further than that, first we'll start by having too much moisture in the guitar, which will cause it to not vibrate as much. It's going to be kind of heavy with, with uh, water, so it's not going to be able to make as good a sound as possible. And further, uh, we get mildew and mold and damage of that sort. Uh, that sort. So definitely don't want that to happen. Um, so we want to humidify. How do we do that? 
Well, uh, you can do like what we did here at the shop and you can put a humidification system in the ductwork. That's gonna keep our store, we keep that right around 45 to 50%. Um, or you can get a room humidifier. Now, <clears throat> there's lots and lots of different options for those. So you can pick those up at your hardware store or your local uh, department store. And that'll help with a room full of instruments or keeping the entire room. If you're gonna keep it outside of a case, this is probably an ideal choice for you. But for most of us, that's not really gonna work. So what we end up doing is what they call case humidifiers. This gives us the advantage, if we got it in a case, we have a small environment that we're able to control and keep done. So you can get lots of different types of case humidifiers. Um, a lot of the ones that you'll see are gonna be like this one from Music Nomad. Uh, this is a sponge-based humidifier. You'll fill the sponge with moisture. Now this one holds a lot more than a standard sponge, but it'll kind of keep everything at its right desired level. Now the downside of this is, you're gonna have to keep refilling this sponge. So if you stay on top of it, great choice. These will last probably about a week, a week and a half, sometimes up to two, but you need to keep on keeping those full. If you're not keeping them full, it's not doing you any good. So one of my, uh, one of my personal favorite versions for a case humidifier, something like the Humidipax here. These ones will hold enough for usually about two to three months at a time. Treat it like an oil change in your car and just plan on every three months replacing these. But what's cool about this is it'll also dehumidify. So if you got too low, it'll emit moisture. If it's too high, it will actually absorb some of that moisture. Again, keeping it at that 45 to 50% level. If we do that, we're gonna have instruments that'll last forever. And we definitely want that to happen. So if you're not humidifying, do it. I, I always tell people, I don't care what kind of humidifier you're using, just get one. And then if you do that, many, many years of happy picking. If you're looking for an acoustic instrument, the Acoustic Shop is the place you want to go. The Acoustic Shop, uh, we've been open about four years now and uh, have been nominated top 100 uh, dealer at NAMM Show uh, for two years now. At the Acoustic Shop, we mainly focus on acoustic music instruments and the accessories that go with them. Guitars, mandolins, banjos, basses, and accessories and the, the lessons and repairs that go along with those. Uh, something that we've been passionate about for the last uh, 28 years of our lives, playing in a family band growing up, then we opened a all-acoustic music store in uh, Missouri to help fill the needs of people that are more focused on just that niche of the genre. With us having all those years on the road, it's really helped us to find the right instrument for the right person. When somebody calls us or comes into the shop, we can actually talk to them and know exactly what kind of instrument would be the best fit for them. And I think that's just something that we bring that a lot of people can. Started out teaching lessons before we even opened the shop. So that is something that has been a passion of ours for the last 15 years. I believe we've said this is where the pros teach and I truly believe this is where the pros teach. At the Acoustic Shop, this isn't just what we do, this is who we are. So if you're wanting to learn how to play the banjo, the fiddle, the mandolin, guitar, the Acoustic Shop's the place for you.
Well, I hope you enjoyed another episode of the Ozark Music Shop. I personally enjoyed reliving some of the memories of punching Jason, but that's that's just because I haven't got to do that in a while. He got bigger than me right after that video was shot. It's not funny. It's not funny, folks. We don't hit. <laughs> now that we're parents, we realize you're not supposed to hit. You're not supposed to do that. Especially not in the face. <laughs> um, if you haven't got to see some of our uh, previous episodes, we have those on the YouTube now, don't we, Jason? The YouTube. <laughs> www.theyoutube. That's not it. We just you are it. getting old. <laughs> you sound like my grandfather. It's YouTube. And it's the Facebook. You don't have the internets. You don't, you don't have any of that. You don't have to say the www. Just... Google it. <laughs> Google Use the YouTube Google. or Google the Ozark Music Shop. Either way, it'll take you to everything you need to know about the shop. Yeah, right. we've got a Facebook page. Show. We've got a YouTube page. You can meet up with us on social media. Let us know what you think of the show. Um, we do not condone violence. We apologize for anybody that's going to tell us that was bad. Um, we were young, young lads in a van, and he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved it. But <laughs> we'll see you again next week, and uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Closed captioning and other considerations provided by 